Andy was a healthy 46-year-old who ate right, exercised, and hadn't smoked a cigarette in his life. Yet he found himself in his doctor's office complaining of a nagging cough and some mild chest pain. His doctor presumed it was pneumonia and started him on antibiotics, but Andy's symptoms just waxed and waned without really improving. And then came the red flag. Andy coughed up blood. A CAT scan showed a mass in his left lung and enlarged lymph nodes in his mid-chest. And then a biopsy confirmed the worst. This young and vital father of three had lung cancer. Andy promptly met with a local oncologist who recommended that he start that very day on chemotherapy combined with a targeted agent to block the tumor's blood supply. But Andy, recognizing the high stakes involved in the situation, wanted to get a second opinion from a regional lung cancer expert who informed him that in patients who had coughed up blood and have lung cancer, this particular combination that had been recommended could significantly increase the risk of him worsening that symptom to the point of a tragic, fatal bleeding event. At that moment, Andy realized he needed to learn about his cancer as if his life depended on it. For centuries, medicine has been practiced in a unidirectional model. We've expected doctors to know and provide the best treatments, and patients have had little alternative but to rely on those recommendations. It was a one-way conversation. New medical information is being disseminated at an ever-escalating rate, and this is what fuels advances in healthcare. But overwhelmed doctors just can't feasibly keep up with all of the progress being made for the range of diseases they're called upon to treat, especially as they're pressed now to see more patients in less time. So we are increasingly seeing an individual physician now becoming a limiting factor in our ability to capitalize on this new knowledge. But we can overcome the limitation of one doctor needing to manage all of the care needs of many patients with many diseases by tapping into the collective intelligence available online. The breakdown of the information monopoly is poised to transform medicine just as it has many other fields in the last few years. And this has the potential to improve healthcare outcomes dramatically. Individuals can now focus intensely on their own medical issues, and if given the right content, they can become remarkably sophisticated, now able to partner with their own healthcare teams, review a range of options, and reach a treatment plan collaboratively. Andy com completed chemotherapy and radiation and hoped to pursue a plan for surgery. But the thoracic surgeon, carefully reviewing his films after his initial treatment, said that he didn't feel that surgery could meaningfully improve his chance for cure. Unfortunately, this left Andy in limbo. He had received a treatment that would not likely cure him, but he was left to simply hope that it had been successful, and otherwise to wait for the cancer to recur. Andy set out to explore his options. Central in the new dynamic of evolving patient and physician relationships is the e-patient, a growing demographic of care seekers who are educated, empowered, and enabled. But even if patients have access to their own healthcare data and other medical information online, they still need to be able to place it into a proper context. As popular as Dr. Google has become, Scraps of helpful information simply can't substitute for an experienced medical perspective. We all tend to be pleased with whatever information we can find online, but it can cause real harm when the medical information we just stumble upon hasn't been properly filtered, interpreted, and vetted. We see patients struggling to interpret their own detailed reports. We see well-meaning but unqualified enthusiasts perpetuating questionable or bad recommendations. And we also see opportunists knowingly misleading those desperate for hope, giving simple answers to difficult questions and problems. Here's the critical point. Healthcare decisions can't be crowdsourced. Medical professionals need to play a central and active, not just reactive role in shaping the new model of patient and caregiver relationships. 
If we give ready access to medically curated knowledge, and especially if we give people the opportunity to interact with experts online, we can fundamentally alter the way that they interact with their own doctors. Andy joined the online lung cancer community, and this is where he found Grace, so to speak, the global resource for advancing cancer education, a nonprofit I founded several years ago as a web-based free offering for the lay public, mediated by cancer specialists. Why do we do it? We want to ensure that what we know and what can help patients doesn't simply evaporate within the walls surrounding a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a single patient. If that experience can help far more people by making this content available digitally. Second opinions have been around forever and Andy's case highlights how valuable they can be, but they aren't always easy to obtain and they only help one patient at a time. We can now convey the best knowledge directly to a global community of people touched by cancer or any other serious medical condition. We want to convey uh, expert, expert opinions and the latest evidence and our personal perspective in an accessible language and in many formats, in podcasts, in blog posts, and a very popular interactive discussion forum where patients and caregivers and physicians all sharing the conversations together. And through these resources, we've been able to help thousands of people all over the world become so informed about their cancer that they can truly participate in their own care rather than just receive it. When Andy found us in mid-2009, lung cancer researchers were just beginning to take notice of an early report of a new treatment that seemed to be potentially effective in a small minority of people with lung cancer, the approximately 4% whose tumor has a so-called ALK translocation, a mutation that had only been identified in a lab two years earlier. In this subgroup of patients, largely comprised of younger never smokers like Andy, a new agent called crizotinib that blocked this target appeared to be able to produce dramatic and long-lasting responses. At this point, Andy was experiencing a constant cough, increasing chest pain, and was becoming taxed just going up a flight of stairs. As he learned from a new CAT scan that his cancer had spread, he also began to learn about the promise of this new therapy. He consulted with his oncologist, and they decided together that testing his tumor for the ALK target made sense. As fortune would have it, Andy's cancer tested positive for ALK. He pursued an opportunity to receive this novel agent in a clinical trial, and within one week, he felt remarkably better. Inside of three weeks, he could go jogging again with his wife. And after a repeat CAT scan showed a great response that continues to this day, Andy entered a bid to represent this very district in the state Senate. He won that race. And now Andy Hill, Washington State Senator for the 45th District, is right here today reminding us all of what's possible. The only disappointing part of Andy's story is that it's exceptional. As we pause to think about an alternative ending in the old model, with him having a high risk of dying from a less informed recommendation, it's sobering to reflect on the opportunities almost missed had Andy not immersed himself and learned about his own condition as if his life depended on it, ultimately becoming his own best advocate. His engagement hinged on the knowledge obtained from medical experts and a partnership with a physician who developed treatment plans with Andy by consensus. Today's genetics research illustrates that many diseases, and especially including cancer, are far more complex than we've ever imagined. People and their illnesses are individual colors in a spectrum. And part of the reason that we've historically often achieved muddy brown results is that we've mixed those colors together. As we evolve to a new era of personalized medicine, patients will need to take a more active role in their own care. They'll need the right tools, and the medical community has the opportunity and arguably the responsibility to provide them so that everybody can benefit from all of the knowledge available rather than be limited by what any one individual happens to know. And if we do this right, 
Andy's outcome won't be the exception, but the rule. Thank you.